This is the easier to read version of Animal Farm by George Orwell, retold and narrated by Sarah Simpson. Chapter 8 A few days after the confessions and executions, some of the animals remembered the sixth commandment no animal will kill any other animal. The dogs killing the other animals broke this rule. Clover asked Benjamin to come with her to the barn to read her the Sixth Commandment, but he refused. Clover asked Muriel to help her instead. It took her a while to sound out all the words, but Muriel read, No animal will kill any other animal without cause. Clover and Muriel didn't remember the part at the end, but if it was written on the wall, it must have always been that way. If the animals were traitors who hurt Animal Farm, that was a good reason to kill them. The rule hadn't been broken. For the next year, the animals worked harder than ever. The new windmill's walls were thick and strong, but it took a lot of extra work to build it. Some of the animals noticed that they worked more hours and had less food than when Mr. Jones ran the farm. Squealer told them they remembered things wrong, Life was much better now. Every Sunday, Squealer would read numbers from a piece of paper that said that there was more food and less work. If it was written on the paper, it had to be true, didn't it? Napoleon almost never came out of the farmhouse now. Napoleon had his own bedroom in the farmhouse. He ate dinner on fancy china plates. Every two weeks, Napoleon would come out with all the dogs all around him and a rooster crowing to announce his arrival. Napoleon decided that the gun would be fired every year on his birthday. He was acting more like a king than the other animals equal. Napoleon created lots of fancy titles for himself, and he expected the other animals to call him by these titles when they spoke about him. These titles included our leader, Comrade Napoleon, father of all animals, friend of the ducklings, protector of the sheep, terror of mankind. Squealer's speeches always talked about how wonderful Napoleon was, how lucky they were to have him as their leader, and how every good thing that happened on the farm was because of Napoleon. After a while, the animals believed that Napoleon was the reason for all good things, whether he actually had any control over them or not. If a hen laid an extra egg, she would say, because of our leader, comrade Napoleon's leadership, I laid an extra egg. If a cow thought the water in the drinking bucket tasted good, she would say, thanks to our leader, comrade Napoleon, the water is good today. Napoleon had one of the pigs write a poem about him. It was, of course, called Comrade Napoleon. Comrade Napoleon, a poem. Friend to everyone, source of our happiness, the reason why we have food to eat. Oh, my soul is on fire when I look into his eyes. He is like the sun in the sky, comrade Napoleon. He loves all animals. He gives us food to eat. He gives us straw to sleep on. Every animal, big and small, can sleep peacefully because he watches over them, comrade Napoleon. Every baby born on this farm must be taught to respect him, must be taught to love him, must be taught that he is never wrong. The first words of every baby should be, Comrade Napoleon. Napoleon liked the new poem and had it painted on the wall of the barn right next to the Seven Commandments. He also had Squealer paint a picture of him to go with it. Napoleon was still trying to decide if he should sell the firewood to Mr. Frederick of Pinchfield Farm or Mr. Pilkington of Foxwood Farm. Mr. Frederick of Pinchfield Farm really wanted to buy the firewood, but he didn't want to pay a fair price for it. There were still rumors going around that Snowball was hiding on his farm and that they were making plans to kill Napoleon. During the summer, three hens were executed. Squealer said that the hens had been caught working with Snowball and Mr. Frederick of Pinchfield Farm on plans to kill Napoleon. The animals found this hard to believe. Hens are very stupid. How could they be making plans? They couldn't even remember how to get from the barn to the yard most of the time. 
Napoleon was getting more and more paranoid. At night, he had four dogs guard his bed. Napoleon had a pig named Pink Eye taste all of his food before he ate it so he could be sure there wasn't poison in it. Napoleon and Mr. Pilkington of Foxwood Farm were becoming friends. Animal Farm and Foxwood Farm were trading goods and services. The animals were upset to see Napoleon being so friendly to a human being, but they thought Mr. Pilkington was better than Mr. Frederick, so they kept quiet. The rumors about Mr. Frederick of Pinchfield Farm attacking continued. The animals heard that Mr. Frederick was getting 20 men with guns to come and take the farm. New rumors started as well about how Mr. Frederick was cruel to his animals. They heard he had beaten a horse to death, killed a dog by throwing it into a fire, and made his roosters fight with razor blades attached to their feet for his entertainment. When they heard about these horrible crimes, the animals wanted to go to Pinchfield Farm to drive out Mr. Frederick and set the animals free. Squealer told them not to do it. He said that Comrade Napoleon had a plan, and they would ruin it if they went and set the animals free. Didn't they trust Comrade Napoleon? The animals hated Mr. Frederick. The more they thought about him hurting his animals, the angrier they got. Napoleon had to come out of the farmhouse to convince them not to go attack Pinchfield Farm. Napoleon told the animals he would never sell the firewood to someone as horrible as Mr. Frederick. From now on, no animal should ever go to Pinchfield Farm again for any reason. Napoleon said that the pigeons shouldn't even fly over Pinchfield Farm. Death to Frederick became the animal's favorite saying. During the summer, Squealer told the animals the reason there were so many weeds mixed in with the wheat crop was because Snowball had sneaked in and put weeds in the field. One of the geese said he had helped Snowball ruin the wheat crop. He committed suicide by eating poison berries. Squealer told the animals that Snowball had never received the award of Animal Hero First Class at the Battle of the Cowshed. Snowball was a coward. Squealer told the animals that they remembered things wrong when they said they remembered Snowball fighting bravely. In the fall, the new windmill was finally finished. The walls were thick and strong. The only way the windmill could be destroyed would be with explosives. Seeing the windmill finished, the animals forgot about being tired, hungry, and afraid. They danced around and celebrated. Napoleon named the windmill Napoleon Mill, and the animals all thanked Napoleon for making the windmill happen. A few days later, Napoleon called a special meeting. He told the animals he had finally sold the firewood to Mr. Frederick of Pinchfield. The animals were angry. How could Napoleon do business with someone like Mr. Frederick, who hurt and killed animals? Napoleon told the animals that all the rumors about Mr. Frederick were untrue. It was really Mr. Pilkington of Foxwood Farm who hurt and killed his animals. Snowball was hiding on Foxwood Farm. They should never go to Foxwood Farm again. Mr. Frederick had agreed to pay $12 more than Mr. Pilkington for the firewood. The pigs laughed and laughed. They were proud of how sneaky Napoleon had been. Mr. Frederick told Napoleon he wanted to pay for the firewood using a check. The animals didn't have any experience with banks and had never seen a check before. Napoleon told Mr. Frederick he couldn't trick him that easily and told him he had to pay for the firewood using cash in advance. Mr. Frederick gave him the money, then took the firewood back to Pinchfield Farm. Napoleon called a special meeting so that all of the animals could take turns looking at the money from the firewood. Three days later, Mr. Wimper came to the farm. He was in a hurry and looked upset. The animals could hear Napoleon yelling inside the farmhouse. The reason why spread quickly. The money Mr. Frederick used to pay for the firewood was fake. Since the animals had never seen money before, they couldn't tell. Mr. Frederick had tricked Napoleon and gotten the firewood for free. Napoleon called a special meeting. He told the animals they would capture Mr. Frederick and kill him. They were going to war against Mr. Frederick. Guards were sent out to make sure that Mr. Frederick couldn't sneak onto the farm. 
pigeons took a message of apology to Mr. Pilkington of Foxwood. Napoleon was trying to be on good terms with him again, so he would help them fight Mr. Frederick. Mr. Frederick and a group of 15 men attacked the farm the next morning. Six of the men had guns. They shot at the animals as soon as they saw them. Napoleon and Boxer told the animals to be brave, but the humans kept coming. Many animals were badly hurt. Napoleon didn't know what to do. The humans were winning. The animals hoped that Mr. Pilkington of Foxwood Farm would come to help, but a letter came from Mr. Pilkington that read, Serves you right. Mr. Pilkington would not help. The animals were on their own. Mr. Frederick and his men were standing around the windmill. They were doing something to it with a hammer, but the animals couldn't see what. Only old Benjamin understood what the men were doing. They are putting sticks of dynamite into the windmill to blow it up, Benjamin told the other animals. There was a huge explosion and a big cloud of dust. When the dust cleared, the windmill was gone. Only a pile of rocks was left. Seeing the windmill destroyed made the animals go crazy. They didn't care about the bullets from the men's guns now. They ran at the men and attacked. A cow, three sheep, and two geese were killed. Many animals were hurt. Even Napoleon, who was careful to stay out of the main part of the fight, was hurt when a bullet clipped his tail. Boxer fought hard. He kicked the men, bashing in three of their heads. A cow stabbed a man in the stomach. The dogs attacked. Seeing the dogs, Mr. Frederick and the men ran away. The animals walked sadly to where the windmill had been. The stones were blown into tiny pieces. Two years of work was gone. They heard the boom of a gun near the farmhouse. Why is someone firing Mr. Jones's gun? Boxer asked. Napoleon is firing it to celebrate our victory, Squealer said. What victory? Boxer asked. The men destroyed the windmill. We'll build another windmill, Squealer said. The animals felt overwhelmed by the idea. You should be happy, Squealer said. The enemy took our farm, but we got it back. So you're saying that we got back what we had before? Boxer asked. Yes, Squealer said. See, we won. Even Boxer understood that they hadn't gained anything, but they had lost friends who were killed. They had lost the windmill. They had less than before, not more. Napoleon put up the green flag and gave a speech, telling the animals how wonderful life on the farm was. They had a parade and walked around the barnyard. Each animal was given an apple as a special treat. They celebrated their victory for two days. By the end, nobody was upset about the fake money or the ruined windmill. A few days later, the pigs found a case of whiskey in the basement of the farmhouse. The pigs stayed up all night, singing Beasts of England and drinking whiskey. They had never had alcohol before, and they didn't understand that drinking too much of it would make them sick. The pigs were surprised by how bad they felt the next morning. They had headaches and were throwing up. The pigs had hangovers from drinking too much whiskey, but they thought they were dying of some mysterious disease. Napoleon had drunk more whiskey than any of the other pigs, so he was the sickest. At 9 a.m., Squealer came out to the barn to tell the other animals that Comrade Napoleon was dying. He was not really dying, but the animals didn't know about hangovers. All of the animals started to cry. The animals said that Snowball had poisoned Napoleon's food. What would they do without Comrade Napoleon to lead them? At 11 a.m., Comrade Napoleon announced a new rule. Anyone who drank alcohol would be punished by death. By evening, Comrade Napoleon was feeling a little better. By the next morning, he was fully recovered and reading books about how to make alcohol on the farm. Napoleon took a field that was supposed to be a place for old animals to retire and planted barley there. The barley would be used to brew alcohol, but the other animals didn't understand this. They thought the barley would be used as food for all of them. 
Late one night, the animals heard a loud crash in the barn. They woke up and ran to see what happened. They saw Squealer lying on the ground in front of the wall where the Seven Commandments were written. He had fallen off a ladder. He was holding a paintbrush. White paint was everywhere. The dogs took Squealer back to the farmhouse. Squealer had been changing the Seven Commandments secretly during the night, but the animals didn't understand what they had seen. Only old Benjamin the donkey understood. He smiled a sad smile and shook his head. He'd seen leaders come and leaders go, so he wasn't surprised that Napoleon and the pigs were sneaking around, changing things to benefit themselves. A few days later, Muriel was reading the Seven Commandments. She thought the Fifth Commandment said that no animal will drink alcohol, but that wasn't what was written on the wall. The Fifth Commandment read, no animal will drink alcohol to excess.